We are now in module one of the service desk practice. This is the introduction to the service desk. This is where your learning begins. Let us take a look at the exam syllabus for this module. Here you will understand the key concepts of the practice. They begin with the purpose of the service desk practice, which you would have learned in the ITIL foundation course. And the practice success factors are the key metrics of this practice followed by certain key terms and concepts, some of which you would be familiar with from the ITIL Foundation course. Uh, here we'll take a look at the communication channel characteristics, the omni-channel communications, the service empathy, and the moment of truth. Therefore, by the end of this topic, you will be able to explain the purpose of this practice, recall the definitions of the key terms of the service desk, and also explain the service desk practice, success factors, and associated metrics. Please remember for the exam, you have to be familiar with the minute detail of everything in this course. The exam has 20 questions. You need one, three or 13 to pass the exam. So 13 or more means it's pass. It's a 30 minute exam. If you're writing the exam in a language other than your spoken language, then you get seven minutes additional. There is no negative marking for the exam and it's a closed book exam. It's an online web proctored exam. As mentioned before, we have a separate recording on how to book your exam through the exam voucher and also have access to a ebook. And in that we also given you a summary of uh, the exam logistics. So here we go with understanding what is the purpose of the service desk? It is to capture demand for incident resolution and service request, it should also be the entry point and single point of contact for the service provider for all users. Note that this is a practice and not just a team, which is more common in the working world. When we say service desk, it generally means a group of people. But remember in ITIL, a practice is made up of the four dimensions, not just organizations and people, but also value streams and processes, information and technology, partners and suppliers. In some organizations, the main purpose of the service desk practice is establishing an effective communication interface between the service provider and the users with incidents and service requests being just two subjects of communication. However, note that incident management and service request management are triggered by this practice in most cases. And those are practices which are different from the service desk practice. So in such organizations, the purpose of this practice could be of the service desk practice that is to establish an effective entry point and single point of contact with all users to capture the demand for incident resolution and service request because users generally contact the service desk team through this practice for incidents and service requests and queries. So organizations should adjust the practice purpose statement and other recommendations given by ITIL according to their own objectives and circumstances. As I was mentioning earlier, service desk is a practice made up of the four dimensions. So let's check out what those four dimensions mean from this service desk perspective. The organizations and people dimension means it indicates a dedicated team, sometimes known as service desk. Information and technology dimension implies dedicated information system, sometimes also known as a service desk. Value streams and processes relate to workflow and procedures for communications with user and other teams. Partners and suppliers indicate involved third parties, in some cases also known as service desk and moreover like a outsourced or a third party service desk. So the term service desk can refer to various types and groups of resources. And those examples are shown in this slide. In many organizations, the service desk is recognized as a group or a function or team of people. Therefore, the service desk team may be involved in activities of other practices, such as not only service desk, but also incident management, service request management, even problem management, generally also service configuration management, relationship management, because they maintain relationship with their users and maybe other practices as well. Even for example, deployment and release management, which are two separate practices in order to keep informed or keep the users informed about the status of deployments and releases, wherever 
required. So here we have the services practice versus the team. The practice includes establishing and maintaining communication channels and interfaces between the service provider and users, includes communicating with the users, it includes enabling logging and tracking communications between the service provider and the users. Therefore, one key word which summarizes this practice is the communication word. And when we relate to a service desk team, it is often involved in the following incident handling and resolution, monitoring and event management, satisfaction surveys for the users and even customers, awareness campaigns and other mass communications, for example, awareness about new services being rolled out, service request processing and fulfillment is also an area where they would be involved in other activities, primarily involving communications with users. So this training program or course describes the service desk practice uh, when service desk teams, service desk software tools or service desk processes are discussed, those are clearly indicated in this course. So this practice is involved in all value streams where the service provider communicates with users. Remember, the power of ITIL lies in its value streams by combining one or more of the service value chain activities, the six of them that is, like planning, improvement, and so on, with one or more of the 34 practices. So there can be several combinations depending on each value stream or each scenario. So combination of those SVC activities and the practices to create the value stream. The practice aims to ensure that these communications are effective in those value streams and convenient for all parties involved. We will be going in more depth to understand the service desk practice and particularly the service desk team or the organization structure in the module three, which is about organizations and people. On this slide, we are looking at the benefits of the service desk practice. For the service consumer, it is clear, convenient, and effective interface and communication channels between users and the service provider. Reduced or removed risk of miscommunications and loss of information. Increased satisfaction and productivity of internal users and increased satisfaction of the external users and improved image of the organization. In ITIL, the organization means the provider or the consumer, but in this case, it is a consumer organization. For the service provider, the benefits are slightly different. Clear, convenient, and effective interface and communication channels between users and the service provider. So this one is common on both sides, but there are some other benefits, particularly for the service provider, such as increased productivity of the service provider employees, increased efficiency due to better triage or categorization of the incoming queries, increased satisfaction of users and customers and improved image of the service provider, and because when the user and customer satisfaction is more, it improves the image of the service provider as well. And last but not the least, more effective feedback capturing and processing. 